Oh my god, internet, I'm so glad you're here. So, over the last few weeks, there has been a whole lot going on, and I have not had much time to talk about it. So, for starters this week, I thought we'd play catch up a little bit. First of all, The Raid, which is the documentary project by our good friend Kevin Michael Johnson, is uh, nearing the end of the fundraising period over at Kickstarter. Now, he's not that far off. He only needs a little over $500 to finish off his $12,000 goal. Uh, which is a lot of money that people have been kind enough to donate, so that is awesome. However, the way Kickstarter works, unless he makes his complete $12,000 goal by the end of the fundraising period, which I think he's got about four weeks left on at this point, uh, unless he makes that complete goal, all the money gets refunded, he doesn't get any of it, and the project doesn't happen. So, if you're feeling generous, please do head over to jointheraid.com, which takes you right to his page on Kickstarter. Uh, and toss him a few bucks. Uh, like I said, he's not far off at this point and every little bit helps. In rating news, the first phase of the zone-wide buff in Ice Crown Citadel, uh, which is called Hell Screams War Song if you're awesome and Strength of Rin if you're not, uh, is now active. Now this caused quite a stir in just about every World of Warcraft related forum on the internet. Now not only is it coming a lot sooner than just about everyone expected, it also applies to hard modes, which has been the big cause of concern for a lot of people. The important thing to recognize there is that Lich King had not been killed on heroic mode in 10 man before the buff went active. The first kill actually came after the buff was up uh, and still hasn't been killed on 25 man heroic. The end result is that a lot of the top end uh, world first progression guilds feel as though they've been robbed of a uh, legitimate or uh, pre nerf kill. The buff being there makes the encounters easier, which makes everything feel like a little less of a challenge. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to turn it off because, I mean, when you're pushing for a world first kill, you don't want to lose it over something silly like a 5% buff. Now, as is usually the case with this sort of thing, the vast majority of the people complaining about the buff are ultimately not affected by it in the slightest. So, if I was Blizzard, would I have put the buff out this quickly? No. Uh, would I have made it apply to hard modes? No, I wouldn't have. Do I think it was a mistake doing both of those? Yes, I do. Uh, do I think it's worth the massive public outcry and complaining that it got? No, it's just not that big of a deal. Moving on. Uh, a whole lot of information about the mastery system coming up in Cataclysm was released. Uh, now, a lot of it we already knew, but there are some new details to the system that we didn't know about before. Now, here's what we already knew, but I'm gonna say again just for the sake of clarity. First off, there are two parts to the mastery system. The first part has to do directly with your talent spec. Uh, as you spend more and more talents in a specific tree, you start getting higher and higher bonuses just for having spent talents there. And the second part is the mastery stat on your gear. Uh, this basically just takes one of those bonuses and makes it even higher. Now this is where we start getting into the new information that they gave us. Uh, they went into a lot more detail on what exactly those three bonuses in your talent tree are and how they're going to work. Now the first bonus is pretty much just straight across the board. Uh, DPS specs get more damage done, uh, healing specs get more healing done, and tank specs get more survivability in the form of additional health. Now for Feral Druids, that bonus is actually going to just say something like, in cat form you do more damage, in bear form you have more health. Uh, they haven't told us what they're doing with Death Knights yet, because apparently there's some big changes they're coming up on announcing uh, as far as how the rune system works and just a whole bunch of other stuff going on with Death Knights. So they haven't told us how that's going to work yet for Death Knights, but uh, hopefully we should see that pretty soon. The second bonus is going to be related to a stat on your gear. Uh, the examples they gave were for like a Discipline or Holy Priest, uh, you get more mana regen out of Spirit. Uh, or for a Frost Death Knight, uh, you get more haste out of haste. So it stands to reason that other, other classes might see something similar, like maybe getting more crit out of crit, or getting more attack power out of strength, that sort of thing. Now the third and final bonus is something that's completely unique to every tree. It's not shared with anybody else. Uh, this is also the bonus that gets increased by the mastery stat on your gear. 
Now they gave a few examples on what this could be. Uh, for discipline priests, the example they gave was more absorption on things like Power Word Shield or Divine Aegis. Uh, so the more mastery stat on your gear, uh, the more those spells absorb, and also the more talent points you have spent in the tree. For Holy Priests, the example they gave was adding a, uh, a heal over time effect to your direct healing spells like Flash Heal or Circle of Healing, that sort of thing. Uh, as you get more mastery on your gear or as you spend more points in the tree, uh, that heal over time effect increases. The last example they gave was for a Frost Death Knight. Um, the example there was that as you get more mastery and more mastery on your gear, uh, you start generating more runic power with your abilities. Now before you go, Ugh, that sounds terrible, that's a completely worthless bonus, or even before you go, oh my god, that sounds completely awesome, uh, remember that there's still a whole lot we don't know yet. The talent trees are being refined and streamlined and unlined and overlined and outlined and who knows what else is going on with those, so a bonus that doesn't make sense right now might actually make a lot of sense coming up. And Death Knights in particular, remember, like I said earlier, uh, they're working on some big changes to how runes and runic power work, so that frost thing might actually be completely amazing, you never know. Now, the last thing I want to mention for today, just because I haven't said anything about it on here yet, is the Ruby Sanctum. Now, this is a new raid instance like the Sartharian raid instance that's coming in patch 3.3.5. Now, obviously, that's probably going to be a little while still. I mean, 3.3.3 uh, is still on the PTRs, although that could be going live any week now. Uh, but then there's going to be some PTR time with 3.3.5 most likely, and who knows when we'll actually see that content. That's all for me this week. I will see you next time.